Let me talk about freedom in our thinking. If naturalism is true, that is, that all that exists is the natural order, and there isn't anything that goes beyond man's experience in time, if naturalism is true, then the naturalist has no reason to believe his naturalism. You write that down and I'll explain why it's true. If naturalism is true, the naturalist has no reason to believe it. Has no reason to believe it. Because you see, naturalism says all of our thinking is just electrical chemical responses. All of our thinking is subject to the laws of chemistry and physics. Which is to say, all of our thinking is determined by the factors in the physical world or in the physical brain in the environment around us. All of our thinking is, in principle, predictable then, because it's just following the laws of nature. Uh, usually, more sophisticatedly put, the laws of physics and biology and chemistry and so forth. But the point is, human thinking is just the species of the physical world and its operation. Human thinking is just, it's on the same order, but not the same level of sophistication as weeds growing. And so if naturalism is true, then the person who's propounding it is propounding it, why? Because his or her brain has required them by the laws of physics and chemistry and biology to say this sort of thing. It's not as though they have the freedom and self-awareness to think about different theories evaluate evidence and make a choice as to which is right or wrong, they just have to say whatever they have to say. And that's why the irony is that a naturalist would promote naturalism and try to tell people it's true. You should believe that and not supernaturalism. The answer is if naturalism is true so that your brain is just working on the laws of physics, then you have no reason to believe naturalism is true. It's just the laws of physics requiring you to say that which is just to say if naturalism is true, there's no reason to say that naturalism is true. You're just forced to say that, just like I'm forced by the laws of physics to say the opposite. Unbelievers cannot even account for why we argue with each other then, can they? On their assumptions, there's no argument because there's no freedom to choose the truth over against error. There's just the laws of physics governing my brain to say and do whatever it does.